Right, so the Google Pixel 7 Pro launched last week. I moved my SIM card out of the iPhone 14 Pro Max here. I've been using it for about a week, and I don't think I'm going to be switching back anytime soon. And I'll tell you the reasons why, and thanks to O2 for sponsoring today's video. Right, so the first thing to note is the design. Now, I was very vocal uh, a few months ago about how I felt that a lot of Android phones had become very samey, all very generic, front camera cutout, curved displays, it all just felt a little bit boring. And as a result, when the iPhone went back to the precise, sharp edge frame, I really liked it. I went on to use the iPhone 13 Pro Max since about April as my daily device, and then jumped onto the iPhone 14 Pro Max when it launched last month. But having jumped onto the 7 Pro here, I kind of forgot how good in the hand and how comfortable it was using those smooth curves. And the polished metal frame runs effortlessly onto the now signature pixel camera strip. And to be fair, I actually prefer this implementation than the sort of very generic now top left-hand side camera array. Of course, camera performance is more important than the way it looks, but more on that in a second. It is a tiny bit lighter than the 6 Pro, with ever so slightly smaller bezels, although you would be hard pushed to notice even when holding them side by side. And I know what you're thinking, yes, I've had an absolute mare with that 6 Pro display. I was on a stag do, don't ask. And uh, while we're on damage, I literally picked up this tiny hairline scratch on the display on the 7 Pro already within about 30 minutes of getting it out of the box. I have absolutely no idea how, so as always, even with Gorilla Glass Victus, make sure you buckle up, get those screen protectors and skins and cases on your phone because it's proper slippy on surfaces as well. I've dropped it about three times. Now, of course, two of the big selling points of a Pixel phone is number one, its camera, and number two, stock Android software. Android how? Android should be, in theory. Because interestingly, the thing is, for many people, it's never quite been like that. Over the years, Google, according to many reports, have been plagued by software issues on their phones, and I can never quite get my head around it, because that was the one thing, the main thing, that. Google are known for and they had full control over. Their hardware game, in my opinion, from a design point of view, has been a bit off until the 6 series, which I thought was spot on, but still, according to a lot of people, the software issues remained. So I thought what I'd do is address some of those issues seen before with the 7 Pro to see whether we have them here. Starting with the fingerprint scanner. Now for the record, with the 6 Pro, I never had a problem, and I think I tweeted this at the time. Mine seems to work reliably and quick. But I also appreciate not everyone's experiences are the same. No two phones are identical, even though it seems impossible for them not to be. So let's have a look. Again, fast and reliable. Some have an issue with the fact that it is a 2D sensor and not a 3D ultrasonic for that added reliability and security. I'm not so fussed. It works and it works well, as does the brand new, I say brand new, brand new face unlock, which inexplicably wasn't on the previous set of phones. And I'm still not sure why. Yes, again, it's not quite as secure as Face ID on the iPhone. Again, this will bother some more than others. So if you are massively risk averse, this may bother you more than it would do maybe me. Now, another big thing that people tend to pick up on, especially with Pixel phones, is bugs. Now, I don't mean beetles and ladybirds. <laughs> I mean glitches, strange animations, not happening how they should, and just the overall phone having problems and not working as intended. Now, interestingly, and I'm not saying there's an agenda behind this, but it does seem quite interesting that these sorts of things do tend to be picked up on by reviewers more so on the Android side, and certainly with the Pixel phones than perhaps the iPhones. I don't know why, because every phone has them, as so wonderfully demonstrated by my 14 Pro Max. What's this? What is, what's going on here? What is this? But again, fair's fair, let's address some of those previous bugs, including stuttery, laggy animations, even when the phone was in 120 hertz, which this phone has on a gorgeous 6.7 inch Quad HD Plus LTPO AMOLED display, I might add, still appeared far less than smooth. Well, allow me to demonstrate with the 7 Pro. And while, like with any phone, not perfect, looks pretty good to me. And while we're on good, the haptics on this phone are 
incredible. Just like on the new Pixel Watch, subscribe for that review coming in the next day or so. The haptics just make every letter type, every app draw swipe up, every fingerprint scan just feel amazing. Probably a bit keen for a phone review. I'll, I'll calm down a little bit now. Now, other bugs and issues that Pixel phones have been reported to have had in the past have a lot of the time come down to the camera. And some of these I have experienced myself, like photos weirdly ghosting the gallery and disappearing from all knowledge, when even though you've definitely taken that photo, when you go to recall a wonderful memory, it's not there. And y again, you can't really put a finger on why. Why are you stealing my photos? Give them back. Where have they gone? Now, of course, all jokes aside, this could be incredibly frustrating if you will then go on to miss out on a huge memory that you want to have had stored and just laggy, freezy camera app navigation as a whole. And I'll address that, the good and bad, when we talk about camera in a second. Now, of course, part of the reasoning behind the improvements of optimization software-wise with the 7 Pro is the fact that like Apple with their in-house Bionic chip series, we have another, a second edition uh, from Google, the Tensor G2. That uses Google's advanced AI to run machine learning up to 60% faster, creating some brilliant features. We know Google have access to so much data, so much information that they can utilize this for good when it comes to AI. One such feature I really like is the ability to have live captions in app. So if you're receiving a voice note, for example, and you don't wanna have the volume on if you're in a public place, maybe more people should adhere to that rule of not having too much volume coming out of their phones or whatever, or talking on the phone when they're in a public place. A Little bit annoying, <laughs> rant for another day. But if you are in that situation, you can still get all of the information straight on your phone without having to actually even listen to it. Not quite sure why I'm doing this. Ronaldinho! You also have an improved recorder app, great for taking notes in work meetings or lectures. And there's a great app suggestion feature, which based on your usage will promote four apps on the bottom of your homepage for quick access. And another great thing that is often overlooked by a lot of phone manufacturers is improvements to call quality. It is a phone after all. Clear calling uses machine learning to isolate and reduce the background noise while also enhancing your actual vocals. But the Tensor G2 doesn't stop there. It has also helped to add to the brilliance of the magical Pixel Phone's camera. A lot of what's been good in recent years with the Pixel cameras has often come down to software, and the G2 optimizes this together with some hefty hardware now, providing a really nice, compelling end product. Night mode now processes faster than ever before, meaning if you do have motion blur in a low light shot, this will hopefully be eliminated in theory within reason. And speaking of blur, with the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, inside the Google Photos app, you can now take advantage of a feature called Photo Unblur, which can enhance the sharpness and detail of even older photos taken on older phones from years before, reliving old memories even clearer. And of course you have Google's unmatched, in my opinion, portrait mode. The edge detection and the sharpness and detail, even with a moving subject, is completely unrivaled on any other phone, even if background blur can slightly be too much at times. This can, of course, be edited after the photo anyway. But importantly, this technology has now jumped to video as well. We have seen this before from Samsung and Apple. But again, as you can see, the end product gives you that lovely sharp focal point whilst bleeding out the background into a really nice cinematic blur. In this new cinematic mode, it adds depth to your scene using software to give the impression of a pro camera lens. Is it perfect? No, at times the edge detection does look as expected slightly unnatural, slightly artificial, because it is software-based. And there is only a max full HD resolution here compared to 4K on the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. Hopefully we do see 4K on a future 8 series and you do have 4K 60 max on every lens in standard mode, which is nice to see. Now, personally, I have found when using night mode, even though it does process quicker, you can still get motion blur. And I also have found there to be still an occasional 
freeze or lag when I'm taking a lot of shots in a row. It's still not one of the most optimized camera apps for that reason in terms of its reliability because this can frustrate and you can miss a moment if it's just a, you know, a couple of seconds and, and then gone. Often I like to take a few to make sure I've got that shot. And while a singular shot is usually more reliable on a pixel than anything else for portraits, if you're taking more than one in a row, it's slightly less reliable. On a positive note, I haven't appeared to have any ghosting images as of yet, and there have been quite a few updates even already in one week, not only to the phone as a whole, but also to the camera app, which is really nice to see. Anything that is becoming an issue hopefully can be sorted out. And while I would like to see a phone perfect sort of the week before launch, inevitably with any phone, it never is. So if they can maintain this quick, aggressive update schedule, that would be lovely. As well as the 50 megapixel primary sensor, we also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide, which now has autofocus, giving you the ability to use it as a macro camera as well, up to three centimeters away. And this can automatically be activated when something is up close. The 48 megapixel telephoto lens has five times optical zoom and up to 30 times total zoom, which while I don't feel it's quite as steady using that long distance as the Samsung S22 Ultra, for example, we do have, like with Samsung's offering, the info at the top right hand side to show you where you are within the scene, which is really helpful. And the Tensor G2 combined with Google's Super Res Zoom does give you some pretty nice details indeed, even at 30 times, as seen in comparison to the iPhone 14 Pro Max using its max three times optical zoom and cropping in its total max 15 times zoom to give the appearance of the same distance. The 7 Pro just kills it here. How old school is that football, by the way? Or soccer ball if you're from the US. I'm not getting into that. It's, it's a football. We'll, we'll move. It's a football. Come on. Now, one area of the Pixel phones which haven't quite been up to scratch with the iPhones in the previous year or so has been in battery. Now, we do have with the 7 Pro, for all intents and purposes, the same 5000 mAh capacity, which was decent on the 6 Pro, but got battered out the park by the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Thankfully for Google, the disappointing drop off from Apple with their 14 Pro Max has made it more of a level playing field. Although I do still find I'm reaching for my charger slightly earlier in the evening than I would personally like. So if I am on a full day out using it a lot, I would begin to worry around three, four o'clock. This is of course subjective, user dependent, and the charging speeds are again, just okay. Decent-ish, but at 50% in 30 minutes charge, there are better options out there quite simply. So um, again, an improvement to that with the 8 series would be nice. The speakers, stereo in nature, are really nice and loud, if a little bit tinny. Um, I'm going to compare it to the iPhone 40 Pro Max again here. Let me know what you think. Which one would you go for? The 12 gigabytes of RAM have kept my multitasking in check, and I haven't seen any aggressive app closures, etc., which you see on some phones. And the IP68 rating, the always on display, and a very competitive pricing compared to the likes of Samsung and Apple at 849 UK pounds and euros and 899 US dollars means the Pixel 7 Pro alone is an absolute shoe in for one of the phones of the year. But if you take into account the rest of the Google ecosystem, which they are now putting their finishing touches to, this could be Google takeover season. Watch out Apple and Samsung. There are some brilliant alternatives now. If you are getting your hands on a brand new Pixel 7 series phone or anything new in the handset world, then today's video sponsor O2 can help. O2 are launching SwitchUp, where you have the freedom to change your current phone for a completely new one whenever you like, 
as many times as you like, simply by heading to an O2 store and trading in your current handset. It doesn't matter how long you've had your current phone or how long your contract is, switching has never been easier. O2 Switch Up is automatically included with new O2 Plus plans at no extra cost. All customers can add it to a new custom plan as a bolt-on for just $3.99 a month. Once customers have Switch Up as part of their current plan, they can use it to switch to a new phone whenever they want. Your original phone would be checked to ensure it meets the grading criteria, and then a new handset and new plus plan or custom plan will be activated to complete the switch, and you wouldn't need to pay off your previous plan. Your original handset would then be refurbished and resold as a like new for somebody else to enjoy. Link in the description for all the info, go check it out. Subscribe to see my Pixel watch review and some Pixel 7 series comparison videos coming very, very soon. Like the video if you enjoyed it, apparently it helps. All the best, have a splendid day. I love you, leave you. I'll see you in the next time. Says boy, TP's out.